was our family and friends who welcome to the work mission, our nation of factual truth, where we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of factual truth without fear, without favor, and without faint. Where we encourage us to live our lives and live it well through the knowledge of factual truth because it is our lives. And personally, I encourage you wherever you are, no matter what you are facing, to enjoy your life, knowing that your life has meaning. Your life is meaningful. Your life is great. Your life is not like a vapor. Your life is not like a grass in the field. Your life is a tunnel. Okay, so I'm sharing with us today what I titled it, the true followers of Jesus Christ, the true followers of Christ. Like myself, those of you who are ex-Christians will understand, especially the born-again Christians. I don't mean like Catholic Christians or Anglican Christians or Methodist Christians or other Christians that are not among Pentecostals, the born-again people that speaks in tongues. They say that's how you know you have been born again, and I'm still speaking in that tongues today, although I'm no longer a Christian. What do they call speaking in tongues? Uttering meaningless words or known words, you know, gibberish, blabbing, blah, 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 blah. Ruma suntoria ma suntoria ma. Linga mo suntoria ma sindalabo. Oh Lord, oh Lord, arika ma sinta. Oh Jesus. Oh Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Oh God. Oh Lord, oh you are welcome, you are welcome here, you are welcome here, bullshit. Who are, who are you welcoming? Can, can't people just think for a while? Yeah, I know you have been indoctrinated to live by fear and the faith, but think, how can you possibly welcome imaginary being? A being you cannot see. A being you believe created you, but you cannot see that being. And you say you welcome in that being or you're worshiping that being. You're supposed to see this being if this being really exists. Why are you debating with people about the existence of God? I need to know. I need to know. Does not common sense teach you that what exists is real and you can touch it, you can feel it, you can smell it, you can use it. But everything in reality, everything you do in reality, you cannot do it with God. So when they tell you with God all things are possible, they are talking in the fairy tale where all things are possible. You that believe that nonsense, tell me if anything has been possible with God for you. Nothing except you repeating the lie your parents spit or spat into your mouth. You have to grow up. Many of you refuse to grow up. You are not matured at all. You are a little child in an adult body. That's why you believe there's a spirit that possesses you. There is a soul that is in you. Know yourself. Use your brain. Engage your brain. There is no other power but the brain power that can deliver you from God bondage. God never existed in any form. You are not God. God did not create you. God cannot do anything. When you say you are God, you are saying you are useless. When you say you are God, you are saying you are imaginary. When you say you are God, you are saying you are worthless, which you are not. But fear and the faith is why you are claiming what you are not. And you are ready to hate or kill for that. But we are now entering the world where people who don't believe that you are bullshit won't let you kill them anymore. They can also kill. So welcome, the true followers of Jesus Christ, especially you know, Africans who claim to be following Jesus. Jesus of the Bible have nothing to do, has nothing to do with Africa. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, has nothing to do with Africa. You say it does. Tell me where the, that God you call Yahweh, Elohim, uh, Yeshua, um, Allah, Jehovah, whatever name you call that God as an African, tell me where that God was when your ancestors was enslaved or were enslaved. How about you, your own very life? 
when you suffered and passed through that suffering and succeeded or went through it and come out mem, come out disfigured, come out, you know, uh, mentally ill, come out no longer yourself, come out suffering. Where was that God? Ask yourself this question. But even if when you go in prison, they are preaching God there. You go to hospital, they are preaching God there. If there is God, there will be no need for prison. If there is God, there will be no need for hospital. If there is God, there will be no need for anything you say you need in this world when you believe in God. That God should be able to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory without you having to contribute anything to it. But they deceive you, tell you that that God is almighty, but he still need your might. He still need your own strength. Which you say that you don't need anymore. It's useless. You have given your life to that God. So that's why you see people, um, Christians, I mean, uh, uh, persecuting us, disturbing us everywhere, telling us to give our life to Jesus. These people actually believe that they are, Jesus is the only way to God they have not seen. You have to see God first before you talk about the way to God. Have you seen God? No. So how can you say anything or anyone is the way to any God? There is no God. If there is a way that leads to God, that's a way that leads to nowhere. There's no God anywhere in any form. You cannot prove the existence of God because God does not exist. You cannot prove the existence of Jesus because Jesus does not exist. But especially that of Jesus, if you insist that Jesus exists, then let the Bible be fulfilled, at least in your own life. Jesus is supposed to show up anytime two or three of you gathered in his name. Not like maybe uh, you don't have to say, oh, Jesus, come, you are welcome. No. He said, we are two or three are gathered in my name. I will be there in the midst of them, not in their heart, not in spirit. You, I will be there in the midst of them. They lie to you that Jesus is a spiritual being. No, Luke chapter 24, 46 to 40, I mean 36 to 43. He told you that Jesus is not a spirit. He tried to touch me, I'm not. They assumed he was a spirit, but he said, no, I'm not. Jesus was not a spirit in the Bible, and Jesus is not a spirit today. That's why you need to demonstrate, show that Jesus. Which Jesus are you following, you Christians? Tell me the Jesus you are following, because today we have thousands, if not millions, of Jesus, different Jesus. Which Jesus are you following? Even in Christianity, you have different Jesuses. Catholic Church have their own Jesus. Anglican have their own Jesus. Baptists have their own Jesus. Episcopal have their own Jesus. Pentecostals have multiple Jesus. Many Jesuses. Which one are you following? But you that always quote the Bible, showing that that is the one you are following. I want to use that Bible also to show you that you are not actually following the Jesus of the Bible. For the fact you say you are a Christian means you are not following the Jesus Christ of the Bible because Jesus never called his disciples Christians. He called them brethren. He called them his sheep. He called them his body. He never, any place in the Bible, called them Christians, even in the book of Revelation, which you claim to be the book of your end. That is where you're supposed to know actually what Jesus means for you. Jesus never called you Christian anywhere. I mean, his, his disciples. He never called them Christians. In fact, in the Bible, they were called Nazarenes, Beelzebub, but never a Christian when Jesus was there in the Bible. Where they called them Christians was in Antioch. Jesus no longer there. Jesus already gone. According to them, Jesus saying he has gone. So they are here now to do what? Greater works than Jesus because Jesus has gone. But they claim that this Jesus is, is in them. Why Jesus? Is, Jesus only prayed that, but you know God never answered Jesus' prayer. <laughs> Your Bible. Especially the last prayer that Jesus made. When he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So understand 
the Bible very well. When you understand the Bible, you will cure yourself from Christianity. You will be healed. The reason why you say you are a Christian and you are strong, no matter what, nobody will change your mind. I'm not talking to change your mind. What have you seen your mind before? I'm talking, I'm speaking for you to use your brain, think for yourself, engage your brain and make use of it to better yourself. True followers of Jesus Christ are male travanis. They hate women. True followers, you cannot follow Jesus and say you value women. Jesus never valued women in the Bible. Show me a place Jesus value a woman in the Bible. Not to talk about uh, of uh, in, in so-called mother. Jesus never called Mary mother in the whole Bible. If I call my mother by her name, you say I disrespect my mother, or oh, blah, blah, blah. How about the Jesus you are following? Jesus never respected Mary in the, everywhere, even at the point of death, as they said, when he was hanging on that cross. He said, woman, this is your son, not me. Jesus never acknowledged any woman as his, as his mother. Jesus never done that. Never. In fact, when they tell him his family members, mother and the brothers and sisters are calling him to come, he said, who are my mother? Who are my brothers and sisters? He said, those who obey the word of God, they are his family members, not you. Is it not why Jesus destroyed families? That's why Jesus divides families. Like your own family. You see how divided your family is? Like your own kinsmen. You see how divided your kinsmen are? All of them are Christians, so but they are divided. This one goes to Catholic Church, this one goes to Anglican, this one goes to Pentecostal, this one goes to Sabbath. Divided and destroyed because a divided people are destroyed people. They are no longer themselves. They cannot build. Are you still wondering or worried or about why Africans are not builders anymore? Originally, they built all things, but today they are no longer builders. They are chasing their servants. Their servants are riding on the horses while they are running on foot. Think, think. Which Jesus are you following? Are you following Jesus the Christ? Do you know what Jesus the Christ said in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 29? Huh? Hear what it says. I will start reading from 28, so I will read 28 and 29. It says, 1929 of Matthew, I mean, Matthew, I mean 19, verse 28. So Jesus said to them, that's his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the generation when the Son of Man sits on the on the throne of his glory, you know, it has passed. It, it, it never happened because Jesus said this thing will we, we happen. Why people surrounding him that time still exist, but it never happened. After now, they claim about 2,000 years, you know, I go, okay, but it never happened. You have followed me. I mean, he said, you who have followed me, we also sit on 12 thrones. I tell you, as Bible said, about I think in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, Jesus said he did not send, he was not sent for the whole world or to the whole world. He said he was sent only to the 12 tribes of Israel, to the household of Israel. Hear what he said. He also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. If you are not among the 12 tribes, you cannot judge or be among the judges of the 12 tribes of Israel. Which tribe are you from Israel? Never existed. All of them are English people. They are not <laughs> the Jewish people, according to Bible. But listen, he said, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Who are the true followers of Jesus Christ? Listen, 
even the gender, you can hear it that he said, everyone who left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for Jesus name's sake. Have you done that as a Christian? Tell them to do that. They say, no, no, Bible say, honor oh, your father and mother. Jesus did not say that. Anywhere you hear that Jesus said, obey your father and mother, is quoting the law. The law for the children of Israel. Jesus never preached any gospel for Africans. Every word of Jesus, God sent him to the people of Israel. Jesus is not for you, my dear African Christians. That's why at last, according to Matthew chapter 7, 21 to 23, Jesus will deny you. Jesus will say that he never knew you because you are a lawbreaker. You are not following the law of Israel, but the, the law of Christianity, which is against the law of Israel. That's why you pay monetary tithe. That's why you do that uh, you are infant baptism. That's why you celebrate birthday. That's why you have a holy book that you call the Bible that is not that of the people of Israel. How many of you Christians who claim you are following the Jesus of the Bible has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land for Jesus' name's sake? How many of you? My mother left me for Jesus' name's sake. So she's a Christian. <laughs> Some of my brothers left me for Jesus' name's sake. They are Christians. Then my three sisters, they also left me for Jesus' name's sake. They are Christians. And that's why their lives are full of crisis because any life that has accepted Jesus or followed Jesus is what? Sick mentally. They are full of crisis. Why are we ignoring matter to Jesus? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you about. Why are you Christians? Why are you Muslims as Africans? Invasion, slavery, colonialism. We are still slaves. We wear their, their, their clothes. We bear their names. We want to be like them. Our lifestyle is borrowed from them. Everything, originality about us, which is nature, is not regarded as a way forward or things worth living for. In fact, we are ready to hate and kill ourselves for Jesus. So that's why we are ignoring nature as a people to Jesus or to God. Nature is not God. Nature is above God. Just as I'm not God and I'm above God. I don't need God for anything. I don't need Jesus for anything. But this is Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ said that you must let go your houses, your brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for his name's sake. How many of you have done, has done that? How many of you have done that, you Christians? How many of you? Then also in Luke chapter 14, which is one of my favorite uh, place in the Bible, 1426, what did Jesus say there? Hear what Jesus said. If anyone comes to me, Jesus, and does not hate his father or mother, and mother, this is Jesus Christ, wife and the children, brothers and sisters, I want you to always focus, also focus on that wife to tell you who Jesus was addressing to. He said, that's why I say that the follow, true followers of Jesus Christ hate women. You cannot care about women and follow Jesus the Christ or Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's a male travanist religion. So why are you true Christian when you are not following the Bible? The Bible where they taught you Jesus. No Christian have seen Jesus in reality. Where Christians see Jesus is in the Bible. 
where they know anything about Jesus is in the Bible. Never in reality. Jesus never come to them. Jesus never show up in their gatherings. All they have is the book. If Jesus is alive, you wouldn't need any book to tell you about Jesus. You, don't, you wouldn't need anyone to write about Jesus. You wouldn't need anyone to tell you about Jesus. Jesus himself will be having conversation with you, discussion with you, argument with you, instructions with you. Jesus said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate, you must hate your father, you must hate your mother, you must hate your wife, you must hate your children, you must hate your brothers, you must hate your, your sisters. Yes, you must hate your own life also. If you don't hate, you cannot be a disciple or true follower of Jesus Christ. The Bible. You must hate because hate and the love are evil. They came from evil, which is God. There is no love and hate in nature. Love is of God. God is love. Love is evil. God is evil. No matter how you try to defend it, love is not what you do. Love is fake feeling. That's why in African language, you cannot find that word love. You cannot find that word fear. You cannot find that word faith. You cannot find that word hope. You cannot find that word humility. Because they are evil coming from the concept of God. That's why they tell you fear God. That's why they tell you believe in God. That's why they tell you hope in God. That's why they tell you love God. That's why they tell you to humble yourself under God. They never tell you to see God. No, they tell you to believe you have seen God. You say, when you see certain things, it's God. They say, Jesus, show us this God you're talking about. He say, he that seen me has seen God. No. If God is real, he that seen you need to see God also. If God is real, he that seen, he had what you preach need to see that God. If nobody can see that God, you are a lunatic. You are schizophrenic. You are mentally sick. It is called mental slavery. You have been enslaved. That's why you don't care about your nature, but you care about spiritual world where they tell you you cannot enter with your nature. You cannot be yourself and make their heaven. You cannot be yourself and follow Jesus Christ. You cannot be yourself and worship God. They want you to hate yourself for God. They tell you, lean not on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge God. Quit God. The God that hates wisdom. The God that hates knowledge. The God that hates understanding. They cherishes faith and the fear. Love and the hope. Humility and the sacrifice. Bloody God. I cannot be a disciple of Jesus. I cannot be a disciple of God because I am not a slave. As a people, we are slaves, but personally, I delivered myself. I ripped my branch off that tree and went back to my original tree, African, ancient African. This is the Jesus, the Christ you're supposed to be following. How many Christians are true followers of Jesus? According to the Bible, where Jesus actually spoke. Don't tell me what Paul said. Don't tell me what the epistle says. Tell me what Jesus said, and I will show you that you are not following Jesus at all. For the fact you go to church every Sunday shows you are not a true follower of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus never asked you to go to church. Jesus never built a church. And Jesus never instructed anyone to build his church for any reason. He said, if they ask, tell you that he's there, he said, do not go. If they tell you he's here, he said, do not believe them. But you are believing them and going. And that's why they are deceiving you with all those arranged miracles and the false testimonies. How about the Jesus, the Lamb? I've shown you about the Jesus, the Christ. He said that whoever will follow him must hate every other person, even in himself, to follow him. Here the, how about the Jesus, the Lamb? Let me read it with this. I, I open it already. Here it says, 
Verse 1 of Revelation chapter 14 said, Then I looked. Remember, this thing happens in the vision, in the dream, not in reality. Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion. A lamb standing on Mount Zion, and within 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. Is what you see in your dream, not in reality. Your dreams are not real. Your visions are not real. Your revelations are not real. They are the products of your wandering thoughts. They are not a gift from any God or from any ancestors or from any spiritual world. They are the product of your wandering thoughts. In the Bible, your thoughts are regarded as Satan that goes everywhere up and down in the four corners of the earth. That's why they tell you that your thought is not God's thought, that God's thought is higher than your thought. It's a lie. God has no thought. God does not exist. You do. You think. But that's how they, they tell you your thoughts, your imaginations are evil. Your hearts are evil. No, they're not. God is evil. God actually says evil. Isaiah 45 verse 7, God is evil. Whoever creates evil is evil. You must be evil to create evil. And that's why I'm calling on Africans. For us to restore our powers and recover our heritage, we must first learn how to be evil to defeat evil. You cannot defeat evil with your so-called good because evil and good are of the same source. It's like you trying to bind devil in the name of God. Why devil and God are one? trying to cast out demons in the name of Jesus, why demons and Jesus are one. That's why nobody has ever successfully cast out any demons they fear because they are worshipping Jesus or God. If you are worshipping God and Jesus, you cannot cast out devil and demons. You cannot. No matter how you try, God and Satan are one. Demon and Jesus are one. They are all imaginary beings. They don't exist in reality. A fairy cannot do you anything in reality. If a, a, a fairy cannot help you with anything in reality. Verse 4. Do you have the name of the father of Jesus written on your forehead? Who is the father of Jesus? Is it Joseph or Jehovah? Who? Have you seen any of them? No. Joseph never existed. Jehovah never existed. You never, Jesus also never existed. But here was four. That's the main place. And he said, these are the ones, you know, those people, I think it's 1,044 people, right? These are the ones who we are not defied with women. They don't have girlfriends. They don't have wives. They don't have women. They don't have sex. Those are the true followers of the Lamb. Jesus the Lamb. The same thing, the followers of Jesus, the Christ, you must hate everyone, including yourself. But to follow the, to follow the Jesus of the Lamb, it says, these are the ones who we are not defied with women, for they are virgins. Hey, dear Christian, are you virgins? Are you virgins? If you are having sex, remember, you will be like those people in the days of Noah. They said that they married, they give in to marriage, and they, 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 they died. The flood came and swallowed all of them, drowned all of them. That's how you, you say we be. Or in the days of Lot, according to Bible, they were married and given to marriage, blah, blah, blah. The fire came down and consumed them. The same thing is happening to you Christians. You are, your life is full of crisis because you have Christ, but not following that Christ. And it's full of crisis. Crisis, you know, you have that uh, mental crisis, uh, psychological crisis, spiritual crisis. You are confused. You don't know yourself. So you need somebody to be telling you who you are or who maybe you were created to be. 
quit Jesus are you following you Christians, you African Christians who are disturbing us in Africa and everywhere, making all your noise. Go to America, go to Europe, go to Asia. The, old, the, the indigenous people of the land don't hear Jesus as Africans who who abandon their place and run to their place for greener pasture or for uh, for, bre uh, for bread. The way they shout Jesus, the way they mention Jesus, you tell them, how are you? Thank God. In America. How is your family? We thank God. That, I always, that's not what I ask you. I ask you, how are you? You don't tell me, I thank God. I didn't ask you, who do you thank? No, I say, how are you? Tell me. Speak for yourself. Stop hating yourself for God. Stop hating yourself for Jesus. Jesus Christ never existed. And every true follower of Jesus must hate women. So the followers of Jesus are male chauvinists. Uh, chauvinist. Yeah, it's a, it's a prejudice against women. They believe that men are superior in terms of ability, intelligence, etc., etc. Even most of you that claim to be awakened stay carrying this Bible garbage. You don't see women as your fellow human being. You see them as your slave, which is wife. You see them as your property, which is slave. You see them as somebody who is, which is in, who is inferior to you you are wicked if you still entertaining that some of you will say but you have a wife i don't have a wife i have a woman. yeah i married her as a wife when i was a christian i tell her i told her and i've been saying that she's no longer my wife i'm not saying oh you must do this if i didn't know no she's free to go she's free to stay I've been saying that. Why will you have a, a boy and a girl and you sell the girl and leave the boy? Sell all your children. Why? Why are you giving your hand, your, the, your daughter's hand in marriage? Why are you selling your daughter? You say marriage. You are selling her to go and be a slave to another man. And that's actually what Numbers, I think, chapter 30 or chapter 35 say, that a woman was born to be submissive to man whether as her father or as her husband. A woman is never free, according to Abrahamic religion. A woman is, 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 is an abomination that defies men, according to Revelation 14, verse 4. A woman is a sin, a sin that pulls men down, according to the Bible. A woman is a weaker vessel, according to the Bible. If you want to succeed, even according to Christians today in real life, they tell you, you know, if you want to make it, forget about women. Go and chase money. When you make money, women will chase you. Women are chasing you because you have enslaved them. Women are not themselves anymore. You have succeeded in subjugating them, making them to, to, be, to be servants to men. And you see most women even like it that way. Slaves that love their chains. Oh, this is my chain. Oh, it, it's shining. Yeah, I polish it daily in the name of Jesus, in the name of God. Yo, women and the money. Because you, you don't allow women to live their life. You don't allow them to be white as they were born to be. What make you think as a man you are superior to a woman? You say, oh, because you're strong. No. You are strong in certain area. There's a strong there's an area women, uh, a woman is stronger than you. You say, oh, no, no woman can beat me in a soccer because for many years, women never, we are never part, uh, allowed to participate in soccer. You see what is happening today. Women are participating in, in every sport now. Women are, men are losing their ground. Whether you like it or not, everything happening today is exposing the evil of the Bible. It's exposing the evil of Quran. It's exposing the evil of Torah. It's, exp it's exposing that God is evil. We don't need God. That's why you see religious people insisting that there must be God. Oh, somebody in America here sent me something, you know, he knows that I don't longer believe that. We are close. 
He sent it to me. He said he saw, he saw this sign. You know, he was driving through another state. He saw it. Are, are you saying they are stupid? I said, yes, they are stupid. I said, first, who wrote that Bible you see there? Let, 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 let me show you what, uh, what I'm talking about. And you know me now. You show me one, I show you millions to show you your own. You see? This is what people made. Who made up this? It's not God. It is Christians. Uh, let me see if I can give it away from this slide so you can see. He said, you see, right and wrong. Who decides? They put their phone number there and you see the Bible. Now, is it God that put that sign on the road there? You are driving through the express. They put it. You hear them advertising about rapture. So why, why is that making you African to feel like there is God? Because white people are, are preaching God, preaching Jesus. You don't know that that's what they, the tools they use to enslave you, God and Jesus. The day you abandon God and Jesus, you will deliver yourself from white supremacy. You will deliver yourself from being slaves to white men. You will begin to plan how to relocate back to your village, develop your own land, using the everything nature has already to develop yourself. So when you see white people, I say, who, who, who wrote the Bible? Who put those signs along the road? Is it God? So why? Because somebody put sign or wrote a book, you are using it to say your yeah, God exists. No. If your God exists, you wouldn't need any road sign. You wouldn't need any book. You will just see that God. Have you seen any road sign where they're advertising the sun? They tell you the sun, you, who, you know, right or wrong. Who decides? I also tell him, it's not God that decides anything. It is people. Somebody decided to make this sign. Somebody decided to write Bible. And all of them are to mentally enslave you. They first defeated you with military might. We became Christians and Muslims not by faith, but by force of arm, weapons. Until today, the world powers are those who have weapons. The third world countries are those who don't have weapons. They are slaves. Are we not slaves? If you say we are not, you are stupid because you are lying. Another Christian say, oh, you know, they, they say we are, uh, the, 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 the atheists, like people that, that, that are not Christians, say that they are scam. Christianity is a scam. Of course it is. He said the people that say that they are fools. I say, you see, if you are, you are not even a true Christian, because a true Christian will not call other person a fool. A true Christian, according to Paul in the Bible, we call himself fool, not unbelievers, fool. Because Jesus asked you to go and preach to that's the lost house of Israel, right? The sheep. But Jesus never asked you to call anybody a fool. He said that if you call your brother a fool, you will go to hell. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. But Paul said he's a fool. Paul said himself he's a fool. Paul said he speak like a fool. So when you say the fool say in how there is no God, you are talking about people that believe in God. With their mouth, they say there is God, but in them, they, they know there is no God. The thought they have, that doubt, because their thoughts always doubt their faith. You are taught always doubt your belief. Because your brain will tell you, no, it's not real. But you insist, no, it's my faith, it's my fear, it's my hope, it's my love, it's my humility. I humble myself. God, I accept God. Oh, I will abstain from every sin so that I will, I will make heaven. Which sin? Where was your God before that sin you claim entered? Oh, God made us pure until sin came from where? Where did sin come from? Everything came from God according to your Bible. All the fo true followers of Jesus are male chauvinists. They have prejudice against women, bias against women, evil thoughts against, they make the laws of the land against women. They say women will not vote. They say women cannot dress a certain way. Women have their own brain. Let them decide where they live or they want to live. Also the same way you men decide where you, you, you are living. It's only stupid women that think they cannot live without men that subjugate them, men that subdue them, men that marries them, men that sells them. 
if you are a girl, if you, begin, you are grown up now, begin to challenge your parents. Why are you asking me to get married? Why are you asking me? I can stay here and have children. If my brother can stay here and have children, I also can stay here and have children. If you don't want to, if you don't want me to stay here and have children, don't have a female ch child again. You don't need marriage. Marriage is not part of nature at all. Marriage is slavery. No married Christian is a true follower of Jesus Christ. No married Christian. No Christian who is having sex is a true follower of Jesus Christ, according to the Bible. You cannot be a family person and be a true follower of Jesus Christ. No. Jesus, what does your family call you? say, who is my family? My family are the ones who are obeying the word of God. That's what Jesus said. And they see they're spreading that lie in the society. You hear people today talking foolishly and saying, family is not by blood. You are lying. Family is by blood. It is slavery that destroys family. And that's why they destroy African family structure. Today we are practicing their marriage. Marriage is not African way at all in the antiquity. It's never African way. In the ancient time, it's never African way. We weren't marrying. We had family. It was called African family structure. We didn't have tribes. We didn't have nations. What we had was family. And we come together, we say, come, let us make. Come, let us build. Come, let us make. That is family. But look at you that say you are Christians today. Oh, our family is a Christian family. You are divided. You hate one another. Your parents don't care about you, but Jesus. Anything you are doing for them, they say it is Jesus doing it for them. And they want you to be that stupid until they die. And many of you have accepted it as your faith. You don't have any faith in nature. Faith or destiny has nothing to do with nature. That's part of evil in the land. You cannot have a girlfriend and say you are following the Jesus, the true Jesus Christ of the Bible. He never have a girlfriend. He never have a wife. Oh, you may say, yeah, he didn't have a woman so that we can have a woman. No. He said, a servant cannot be above his master. He said, the best a servant can be is to be like his master. Didn't Paul say in your Bible, follow me as I follow Christ? Who, who was the wife of Paul? Who was the child of Paul, children of Paul? Where are they? But you see Christians who are you know, uh, competing with the world, competing with the people they call unbelievers to have houses, to have lands, to have wives, to have uh, children, to have brothers, to have sisters. Yes, you see them bragging. Oh no, this world is not my home. I, I, I'm just passing through. I'm going to, which heaven are you going? When you say Jesus is the way and you are not like Jesus, you will not make it. You, will not, you can never follow Jesus to God when you, are, when you have a woman. You cannot. So when you claim to be followers of Jesus and you think it will make me feel bad, you are stupid. It cannot make me feel bad. It make me know, remember that I used to be like, I used to be stupid like you. I used to preach Jesus. I used to do morning cry, evangelism, seminar, crusade. Everything you are doing as a Christian, I was doing it in a better way because I was genuine. You are not. You are lying. When you see a genuine Christian, they will not even argue with you. A, a genuine Christian. Mm -mm. A genuine Christian will just preach to you the gospel of Christ. That's it. A true Christian will not ask you for offering. A true Christian will not ask you for tithe after they preach or after they minister. They will not ask you for that. Because Jesus never instructed, Jesus told them, any house you go. When Jesus said, go into all the world, he did not say, go do seminar, don't go do crusade. It's Christianity that brought seminar and crusade. Especially crusade where they were slaughtering people, forcing them to become Christians. Jesus said, when you go, any house you enter, say, peace be unto that house. If they accept you, okay, bless them. If not, he said, dust your, your shoes and get away from them. They will suffer for it. Say, going to the world, preach. He that believe will be saved. He that believe not will be damned. 
But you see Christians in the public transport, arguing with people, disturbing people, arguing with people, praying and collecting money from people, and claim that they are following Jesus. Which Jesus are you following? You Christians, especially you African Christians, you black Christians. I want to see the Jesus you are following. If you quote the Bible, you are not following the Jesus of the Bible. You are only quoting it to justify your stupidity because you think that is the truth. Bible is a claim. It is not a proof. So in closing, as I say, giving your life to, to Christ Jesus cannot change your life for good or for better using your own words. Faith in Jesus you have not seen or cannot see makes you stupid. I know some of you are happy to be stupid for or in Christ. So I'm not expecting great words from you. I have been in your shoes. I was once a Christian. I was once a minister of the gospel. So what are you in the name of Jesus that you think I have not experienced? I was better than you. I was a better Christian than you. I was doing everything then to be like Jesus of the Bible. Not the Jesus any pastor is preaching. I was doing everything, studying the Bible to be like Jesus of the Bible. The same way Jesus said you must be, I was like that. Until I found out that Jesus never existed. It started with unanswered prayers. You are praying for something, it's not happening. You continue praying, it's not happening. But you keep you know, encouraging yourself or deluding yourself, not encouraging, keep deluding yourself. Yeah, God, God knows what is better, but what is best for me. God's time is the best. Let me wait. Yeah, time is man made. Time is not, nature has no time. Nature just existing, just as you're supposed to just existing. They kill you, you'll be born again. That's why you must be born again by a man and a woman, not by a water, not by water and the spirit. Understand life. You will no longer fear God and you no longer follow any Jesus. But know yourself, follow yourself and live your life. Christians are unrepentant liars. They refuse to repent after they find out the truth about their God, about their Jesus. They are unrepentant liars. And the, their Bible says, Revelation chapter 22, I will close with that. Revelation chapter 22, verse 8. This is what their Bible says. Hmm? 22, verse 8. It said, be, uh, outside our world. Let me see, 21, verse 8. Yeah, uh, Revelation 21, verse 8, so it's not 22. He said, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, those who sleep with women, whether married or not, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death, death. If you say you are, you believe in Jesus Christ, but you are not from Israel, but you can't. <laughs> you believe in Jesus Christ when you are not in a, an African. You are among the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. You are among them. And your part is in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Death. Second death. There's no second death in nature. In fact, there's no that thing you call death, like the end, is not in nature. Nothing nature never ends. Nothing ends in nature. But this is your portion. You Christians who lie, you say there is God, you cannot show that God, you are a liar. You say that Jesus Christ died for your sin, he paid it all, yet you are still paying or still committing sin, you are a liar. So when you say you are following the Jesus of the Bible, but you are not doing what he commanded in the Bible, what he instructed in the Bible, you are not a true Christian, a true follower of Jesus, and you are a liar. Your portion is hellfire. If you don't have any religion, you will never go to any hell.
I don't have any religion. If you don't have any God or any Jesus, you will never go to hell. It's when you have them, you have to abide by their rules. If you break any of their rules, that's your express way to hell. Fuck them and their hellfire and enjoy your life. Godliness.